there's a few settings you need to know about 3D Puff, so I'm gonna go over those really quickly. First of all, the setting that you're gonna do for your main cutting, what they call a cutting stitch, which is gonna cut through the 3D Puff, is going to be between 18 or 16 millimeters. A lot of people do 16. Some people I've seen even do smaller than that, but you really want it dense. For regular stitches, like let's say for instance, this outline here, that's fine to be whatever is if, as long as you're not cutting through 3d foam okay now there's some other things that you need to know about and you're going to have three different parts to this you're going to have your cutting foam which is what you see here which is going to be a satin stitch and then let's come down here and then you're going to have what's called a cap now whenever you have an opening here and if you've been following along with my series you understand that you have a push and a pull thing going on here, right? So everything on the side of these, it's pulling inwards and on the edges, it's pushing out. So your 3D foam will push out of these open ends. Here, you don't have to concern yourself with that either here because that's flat. But here you have an opening, here you have an opening. And on here, we have what's called a bridge. So let's show you what a bridge looks like. A bridge is just gonna be anywhere you have two uh, pieces meeting right here, two stitches meeting. So here, where this part of the B is meeting this part of the B, you're going to have a bridge to go over the top of there to make sure that you don't, uh, this doesn't pull apart as you're doing your 3D pop. Um, you don't have bridges anywhere else, but if you had to have bridges uh, let's just say, for instance, this was a separate piece here. You would put a bridge here because that's two pieces meeting each other. You would do it again here to have another bridge. And sometimes the B will will start the B right here. And so I'll put a bridge right here, okay? But this needs no caps. And let me show you what a cap is gonna look like. Different people do these caps different ways. But for the most part, when you do your caps, you're gonna you're gonna have it on the end here, right? And it's gonna come in like this. And I'll do a right click here and do a left click here and then do that and that. And then you're gonna make a fill, excuse me. You're gonna make a fill, okay? And it's gonna be a satin stitch. And your, uh, let's put H here. And you want those kind of running back and forth here. Uh, a lot of times what will happen as well, you can do this effect. And you'll see some people do this. And it's used, it's called a feather edge or in Wilcom, it's called a jagged stitch. You won't do it, on, you'll do it on that side. And this is just trying to make sure that you don't crush your 3D foam too much. The thing about this cap, what you want to do is make it smaller in here and wider on the outside. Let's press T. And um, a lot of times uh, you also wanna drag this out. Let's push O for your object and you'll pull this out about, uh, about a half a millimeter, right? So let's push your M for your measurement tool. Let's go here and that is about a half a millimeter. So you'll pull that out. Now, the way I would digitize this letter and you'll see this next, so you'll have two of these coming in, right? So. That cap is already made, so I'm not gonna make another one. And I'll show you, since we already have bridges already made, I'll show you how these are done in a second here. But anyway, so my these letters have already been done. You don't have to concern yourself with those letters. Those letters have been done. So let's start with the CBS here. Now, I'm gonna start, if this is on a cap, I'm usually digitizing for caps. I'm gonna start in the middle and then work my way toward the top but I'm not gonna really worry about that right now. So let's, what I call a um, a global stitch because you wanna get that, that stabilizer pulled onto the cap so you won't have any registration issues right off the top. So the first thing you wanna do is make sure you do what I call a global overlay. So, or underlay, excuse me, you come here. And the reason why you're kinda zigzagging is you don't want your presser foot to come down on top of your 3D foam in the same place and kind of squash it, right? So now that is your first little bit of global 
uh, underlay. Now, since we're already here, a nice little thing to do, come over here and we'll grab this cap and we'll put this cap in, right? Since we're already here, let's go ahead and now this video is going to be longer than your standard video. So if you want to fast forward this or watch it at a different time, I'm not going to rush through this because this is something you kind of need to know how to do. So while we're doing this, we're going to learn our pathing as well, right? So this is your start. And so we're going to start, excuse me, we're going to start here and give yourself some type of uh, a system. I usually put the green on the right and the red on the left. So I'll know where my start and finishes are. So now we know this is your, we need to start here, right? And that's from coming from down here. It's going to go here. And then when it finishes, it's going to finish here. And then we're going to go back down here, right? So we can go to the next cap. So since that's already done, excuse me, we're going to right click down here and you'll duplicate that click on it and we will turn it around there's a lot of people that do a lot of these um, a different way let's take off the effects on this because I did something weird okay so there's a lot of people that do these a lot of different ways just watch videos and see what works best for you these caps um, I've only done one set it was like the first time I did 3d puff and I did my caps I don't know how I did them wrong but it didn't work and my puff was all sticking out but I've only done that once so do your make your mistakes one time and then don't do it again so let's go for your reshape here remember I said this is the same thing the green is on the right and then the exit is on the left so we know that uh, we have we have to come back down. So we'll go to this one and we know we're gonna start over here on the left. We'll get a closed, digitize a closed shape, or excuse me, an open shape. And we'll start here since we know that's where we're going. And we're just gonna zigzag again, trying not to go in the same place that you went before, but it doesn't matter that much, but you don't wanna crush, especially if you're not using expensive, and we're gonna end right there. And now you're all connected, right? And so that right there, and now what you want to do is start your letter, right? So now uh, we know that we ended here, and now we're going to start a letter down here. So now we're going to digitize. We're going to do a column here. And then we're going to go all the way around. These are all right clicks. Um, if you don't know what I'm talking about when I say right clicks or left clicks or you're kind of lost that means that you skipped in the series and if you don't know how to digitize I have an entire free series and a playlist down there to teach you how to do this if you don't understand how to digitize or you're brand new to hatch go watch that series all right so then we're going to finish up right here and these are two left clicks and that's a done deal. So now we'll just press T so we can see what we got. Oh, this needs to be a satin stitch. We'll turn off this auto split manual spacing and we're gonna turn this, remember our settings. Now we wanna turn this into an 18 or a 16 or whatever. And that is your 3D puff done for your C. Let's move on to the B now. And we're gonna start down here at the bottom again. Um, actually, I'm gonna start right here because this is the way kind of I'm gonna digitize it here. So we're gonna start here. Excuse me. We will start with our bridge. My bad. And there's your bridge. So now we'll go around and we'll do some global underlay. I'm not doing anything specific here. I'm just zigzagging around. Right? That's all I'm doing. There's no specific way this the reason why I'm zigzagging is just so we don't have a bunch of monkey business now we're going to start right here so I'll push, push it. I'll end right there now we're going to take our column tool and we're going to digitize around so we'll go here 
here and then those are two left clicks and these are all right clicks and we're gonna go all the way around with mostly right clicks uh, again you don't have to be perfect here these are left clicks you don't have to be perfect here um, these are left clicks I'm gonna go all the way down here to the bottom you don't have to be perfect because you can go make corrections these are left clicks now I'm gonna go back to right clicks and the bees are pretty easy so there you go now these are right clicks to finish now if you notice I didn't go all the way back but you can bring those back put H and you can bring those back first of all let's turn this to satin let's turn off the auto split manual spacing and then let's grab these two and you can bring these back if you want to just add some some joints here just hit the space bar to get your round joints and you can just drag keep dragging this back this is also gonna need to be round and just keep dragging it back like that and then still do that again this one actually might be a two square ones right there so you can you know make mistakes and correct as you go along and that B is done you don't have to do any um, uh, this can be fixed but you know obviously we're just doing this for demonstration purposes all right so let's move on now we already have a couple of caps here selected right so we can come over here let's push T and there's your cap selected let's drag that out of there by right clicking on it now we have a copy of that and we're gonna come over here okay now we're gonna do our global underlay again okay and we'll start here and we'll go around okay we'll press enter now we go in here, press H. We know that we're starting here, which is beautiful. And we already know that we're going to start on the left and end on the right. So we're going to come over here because we've already digitized that this way, right? So if you press H, you see your start start is right there, which is great. Now let's do a little bit of turnage here. All right. Let's turn this around. All right, so we'll get this in. Remember, we want to stick this out about a half, half a millimeter, H. All right, so we'll bring this up. And see, this is where we're going to end, right? So we started, we're going to end on this side, so it doesn't matter. So you can start here if you want to. We'll start here, go down to here and we'll end here now let's go grab this drag this out let's turn this around H and your start is on this side so we'll come over here that'll connect there and that's a done deal so now what we want to do is we're going to digitize our way back up so let's grab this again and let's go up our S start here a little bit those are two right clicks or two left clicks excuse me now we're gonna right click all the way around that's pretty much a done deal for this just remember now when you I'll show you what you'll do to set your right click around to set your settings for your 3d puff 3d puff is not it's like seems like it's kind of mystical a lot of people I've noticed the problems that they come across is like it's really a machine problem sometimes some machines aren't really meant to do caps so when you buy if you haven't purchased your machine yet make sure that you buy a machine if you're gonna do caps it is kind of made for caps right 
So uh, that's just a decision you're going to have to make. That was one decision that I made for my shop was like, I knew I wanted to do caps. It was like the whole reason I got into embroidery is because I saw that I could do caps. So I bought a machine that they kind of rebuilt for caps. And that's that as done. That's a wrap. So now let's go through some more changes that we need to make here. So when you come to stitching, you don't need any underlay because you did your own global underlay, right? So take off all your underlay on all of your letters. So you don't need any underlay here. So let's take all your underlay off and you can do underlay here. That's fine. So do an edge run like a zigzag or something there. And this is the same thing. I would probably end up doing a tatami here and an edge run. And for this round thing here, I would just do a center run. That's all I would do for that. Okay. So now, uh, now we have to set your, for your stitching, your fill. Remember, we want to set these down to 18. These are your cutting stitches, right? So let's set these down to, for your 18, for your cutting stitches. And this one, I think I said for 16 or something like that. That's 18 for your cutting stitches. And that's a done deal. Now you need to do a stitch that out. I'm going to stitch out a 3D puff hat in the next video. This was only for digitizing. But that's a done deal. The only thing you need to remember, let's recap really quickly, is when you have two paths meeting each other, like it would have did you some good to do a a um, a bridge here maybe. You did a bridge here, right? And you didn't need any caps. And remember, if you have openings like this, you have to put this cap in or your 3D pop is going to fill out. So make your caps, run your global underlay, and then go back. So just path yourself so you don't have a lot of trims. And then come over here and do the same thing. And I would um, strongly advise that you just do a lot of 3D puff and just get used to it. All I did was every day, which is the mantra of my channel, every day, get yourself a project. You got the machine right there. Stitch it out. You make mistakes. Fail early and fail often. That's all you want to do. And you'll get this 3D puff down. If you have any questions, shoot them down there in the comment section. That's my story. I'm sticking to it. I'll see you in the next video. Peace.